Hi, in this episode, I'm going to take a look at how you create broken UTM grids in your layouts. Okay, to be fair, this may be one of the more complicated uh, videos uh, I've posted here. Uh, and it may be a bit long-winded and uh, sciency, uh, but I think I need to tr at least try to explain why some steps are necessary. Uh, if you have GIS training, you will understand, uh, I guess, all of this. But if you don't, uh, then I feel obligated to at least try to explain some of the steps. Uh, one issue that we will revolve around is that we will be working with several projections. And uh, if you don't know what a projection is, you can go to YouTube and search for map projections, or you can do a Google search for projections and GIS. Uh, suffice to say that it will be an issue that we need to deal with. And I will start by try to uh, well, exemplify what, why this will be a problem for us. So, um, I will be using QGIS 3.8, and uh, if you are using uh, 3.10 or later, then uh, there will be some differences, and I will try to remember to point out the differences when we get that far. But to start with, uh, we, I will create a simple world, world map by typing world in the coordinate field, like that. And I will create a temporary scratch layer that are test lines, line strings, and uh, it should be in the same coordinate system or projection. And I will just create some lines. One, straight down the middle, about here. I will do one a bit offside here, straight, and I'll try to do some uh, diagonal lines as well. Try to make the cross at a location where we can find it later. Okay. Uh, let me just make this a bit more visible. So, now we have a few lines. And they are have a starting point and an end point. Uh, and they are shown in the projection uh, WGS84, or EPSG4326. Uh, when we create a UTM map, we do that in a UTM projection, and that is not accurate for more than a limited area on the Earth. So if I change my projection to, let's see, UTM zone 33, it will look weird on the map, but never mind. You see, we still have our straight lines, but as you noted, the cross between the diagonal lines were here. So there's something wrong. So let's just switch back to WGS84. Okay. Now I will compensate for uh, the line drawn in this projection so they will uh, represent the same location when we reproject them. And I can do that by adding points to the lines. Uh, as I mentioned, now they are only have a starting point and an end point. So we'll increase the interval uh, uh, by densifying the lines. Dense... Densify by interval. Um, 
whenever you use a tool like this and you have an unprojected system uh, in degrees, you get a warning, but we can work with that. So the test line uh, can add uh, an interval. I will use 0 0.1 degree and run it. Now we have two lines. One is, uh, let's make it red. One is red and the other one is black. And now let me reproject it to UTM zone 33. Now you see the cross between the diagonal lines are still in the correct location. And the uh, vertical lines are only close to correct in the center of the uh, map. The further away from the center, the more they uh, deviate. But is it correct or is it wrong? Well, look where the red line here uh, follows over Sri Lanka and uh, the Arabian Peninsula. And let's go back. And there it is. So by densifying the lines in the projection they are drawn makes it more correct when we reproject the map. So that is why in this process I will need to densify some of the lines and uh, other shapes. So I hope this is reasonably well explained uh, to you. And uh, well, now we can get started. Let me just get rid of these test lines. What happened? Okay. Let's remove them. Yes. So uh, since I'm from Sweden, I want to make a map for Sweden and all this uh, area up here. Uh, and the first step is to define my area in this unprojected system, WGS84. Uh, and I can do that by drawing a polygon or whatever. Uh, but I think uh, zooming into the area is good enough. Then I need to create a grid for this area. So I will find the processing tool that creates grids. Create grid. And again, we get the warnings, but never mind. I want to create a grid of a rectangle type. And the extent, I will start by uh, selecting ex extent on the canvas. And I make sure I cover all of Sweden. And now comes an important part. First of all, I need to edit this grid extent. So let's just get rid of all the decimals. I don't need them. And I need to compensate for the extent of the UTM zone grids. And uh, if you know about UTM zones, you know that they are six degrees wide and uh, the grid zone designator is eight degrees high. So I need to make sure that my values in the grid extent um, correlates to those lines. And then I know that the first or the Minimum on the x-axis should be at 6 degrees. 24 actually is on a UTM uh, boundary. 54 is also on a UTM boundary. But 69, I need to increase that to 72. Uh, then the all the numbers on the x-axis is 
uh, dividable by 6 and on the y-axis by 8. Um, the horizontal spacing should be 6 degrees, the vertical spacing should be 8 degrees, and the rest is fine. So let's run it. Uh, let's make it a bit transparent. So, as you can see here, there's a little part outside Sweden that is not covered, but never mind. Uh, now I have my area that I'm interested in, I, and I can see that I have one, two, and three UTM zones. Um, and I need to create my grid for these three zones. Uh, but in order to use these polygons in a projected system, I need to densify. So, my recently used densify by interval, and I use 0 0.1 degrees, and run it. Now I can get rid of my old one. And I will rename this UTM zones just to uh, know what I'm doing later. Okay, so now when I reproject it in any other zone, it will uh, make sense or work uh, good enough at least. So I will start by. Uh, working in this uh, zone that I know is UTM zone 32. So I will change my project to UTM zone 32. Here we go. And as you see, it will have, uh, it has changed the uh, orientation and shape of the, the UTM polygons. Uh, next, I need to add a filter. So I only want to use the one, the polygons that are in this zone. And uh, for that, I need to use any polygon that has an ID or a value of three or less. Let's test it. Yep. Seems to be right. Okay. Now I need to create a new grid. So create a grid. And this should be a line type. The extent, select on canvas. And make sure you cover all the area with some margin. And now we need to edit the grid extent again. So first, remove all the decimals. Uh, and one important thing here. This coordinates x min and x y min are the starting point for your created grid. And for it to be correct, it can't start with 3, 2, 8 in the end here. I, I want to create a one kilometer grid, so it needs to start at even kilometers. So it needs every uh, coordinate number here need to end with three zeros. So edit that. Here we go. Those three. And set the spacing to 1000 meters. That's it. So run it. And there we have it. Now, as you see, it is bigger than we need. So we need to clip this area. Uh, so we need to clip, clip vector. We clip the grid with the UTM zones. Run it. And 
now we have the clipped UTM zone lines. This one, let's rename it to UTM32 and get rid of the old grid line. Okay, next step, we need to go to the next UTM zone and we will repeat this for every UTM zone you want to create your grid for. So I go to zone 33, click on the little filter symbol, and now we need to add a, uh, modify the filter so we only see the polygons for this one, and that is ID over or equal to four and id less than or equal to six let's test it yeah three rows correct now we repeat all the steps again by using create grid line Extent, select on the map, like that, edit the extent, so all the numbers end with three zeros, and make the spacing 1000. Run, close, clip. Clip the grid with the UTM zones. Run. Oh, did I forget to densify the last one? Damn it. So let's just I'll go back and do that later. Now we need, need to densify by interval. And uh, now we have a projected system in uh, meters and not degrees. So for this I use 10,000 meters. That is good enough. Now it's all, all right. So let's rename that to UTM33. Get rid of the clipped ones. Okay, and before I go back and continue, I'll move to the previous projection. Densify by interval, UTM 10,000. Okay, remove that, okay, and rename it UTM32. I did say this was complex, so it's easy to forget a step. So we'll do it one more time, hopefully correct this time. Uh, we are done zone 32, 33, and let's move to 34. So let's find 34. Let's change the filter. And now we need to be at seven or more. So test it. Yep. Okay. Let's move this down a bit. Let's create a grid. Lines. Extent from canvas. Oh, you might ask, why don't I use the extent of the layer? I will show you why. Use layer extent, UTM zones, okay. I get that in degrees. I need to have this in the projected coordinate system. So that is why. So let's redo it. Lines, select extent on canvas. Uh, like 
that. Fix the coordinates. Make the spacing like that and run it. Close clip the grid with UT no UTM zones. Run it. And then we need to densify by interval. Clipped one ten thousand. Run close. Rename that one UTM third. Oops, did something wrong. UTM thirty four. Get rid of those ones. Okay. One more thing. I want to reuse the polygons, uh, but I want all of them. So let's remove the filter clear okay and i don't want them to be polygons i want them to be lines so let's create lines uh, let's see uh, polygons to lines utm zones okay let's rename that to utm lines and now i can turn that off so if i change the pro project back to wgs84 and zoom in on a boundary here you will start to see the lines we have created This is the one kilometer grid that we will be using in our maps, map layouts with broken grids. Uh, but before that, I want them to be in one single layer. So let's combine them all. Uh, merge vector layers. And I don't want to use those two. So the UTM zones and UTM lines. And I want everything to be in unprojected WGS84. The merged layer will be saved to a geo package. Let's call it UTM grids 1k. KM. And uh, call the layer UTM1K. Like that. And let's pray to the GIS gods and run it. Done. Okay. Uh, let's not remove them, but turn them off, the other ones, and see what we got. Doesn't, does it look correct? Yeah. Let's style it a bit different. And before we do that, I want to look at the table. So we have... some artifacts from the processing here and we have a layer column id column and path column we don't need all these but as you see the layer column seems to be useful do we have the utm line layer somewhere yep we do uh, so i can get rid of some layers, save some space in the database. 
FID should be kept. Um, if you want to do some more processing, um, you could save the left, top, right, and bottom ones, but I think mine are somewhat corrupted, so I will remove them. Uh, I will also remove the old ID column and the path column. So FID and layer are all that I will keep. Okay. Like that. Save and stop edit. And hope it doesn't crash. Come on. Yep, it work. Okay, now let's style it. And we do that by categorized styling and on the layer and classify it. So for UTM lines, um, I will keep the different colors for now, but the UTM lines, I will make them a bit thicker. So they are a bit more obvious. Um, you can style the layers any way you want, but I will keep the colored lines for now. So let's choose a location to start with. About here, I think. Let's see, yeah. This is good. And create a map layout. Control P. Test UTM broken grid. Add a map like that. And uh, I will project my map in UTM zone 33 like that. And it should be in a uh, small scale, 50,000. Here we go. So now we have the grid. Uh, let's put a frame on it as well. Uh, now we need to add the numbers, the coordinate numbers. So let's go there. Expand the grids, add a grid. This should be grid in UTM 33 zone, the uh, right one. So we change the CRS since the project is in uh, WGS 84 to 33. The interval should be 1000, like that. And as you see, it is correct on the right side, but it's wrong on the left side. But fortunately, we have already created the grid lines, so we don't need these grid lines. So instead of a solid grid type, we use the frame and annotations only. So let's add the annotations, draw coordinates, like that. And since we are starting with the right side, we don't need anything on the left side. So re let's remove those, disable those. Uh, and we need to do a custom grid. And well, I, I will, you can do anything you want here, but I will exemplify by just putting in the grid number. Or we can make it just the kilometer numbers. Left, right, right, grid number, five most from the right, and two most of those. So you can see what happens. Uh, and it is correct on the right side, but not on the left. So now we need to filter out the numbers on the left side. And it's now that things start to get really complicated. So, first of all, we need to know where each number is located 
in order to figure out if they are on the right or wrong side of the UTM zone boundary. In order to do that, we need to know the map frame extent. And in QGIS, let me just move this away a bit. In QGIS 3.10, you can get the current map frame extent by a variable. Map extent. I don't have 3.10 in this uh, video. I have 3.8. And therefore I need to do something a bit different. I will need to use uh, item variables. So let's search for it. Item variables. And you get an example here for uh, map scale. But that could also be used for map extent. But we also see that we need to have a reference to the map frame. And uh, I haven't created that. So let's do that first. Item ID. Let's call it main. Okay. And let's go back to the grid and the coordinate. Item variables. Let's see. Item variables. So let's take all this and copy it. So map get item variables from the map frame called main map. My main map is called just main. And don't use map scale, use map extent. Uh, I'll remove this. So you see that the output preview is actually a polygon. So the interesting part that we need to filter is not on the vertical axis, it's on the horizontal axis. That's one parameter we need to consider. But uh, let's just assume that we are using grid numbers on the horizontal axis for now. Uh, and to compare the grid number on the horizontal axis, the x value, uh, with the x value for the OTM zone, we need to compare geometries and not... Uh, X line. So first of all, I need to create a point for each grid number and transform them to uh, unprojected lat uh, latitudes, no longitudes, and compare those with this line. <sighs> Hopefully it will be more clear a bit uh, later. So I need to create a point. And I have the grid number, that's x, so I need to get the y. And I will use the map extent to get the y. And now I have to choose. Do I get want the y for the bottom part of the map frame or the top part? I will use the top part since we have an issue here where the 21 number is on the right side on the bottom but on the wrong side at the top. And I want to filter that one out, which will also filter this one out. Uh, and until we can differentiate the grid number variable on the top from the bottom, uh, this is a compromise you need to live with. So I will use the top y coordinate. And to get that one from this map extent, I add the y max function and as you see i get a y value okay and we need to add the x value and that's a variable that's the grid number comma y x comma y and to make that the geometry we need to make a point so make 
point and it's a function and end the function and now we have the geometry in a point next step i need to transform that to uh, unprojected wgs84 so transform transform all that and it takes the geometry as the first variable then it wants to have the source uh, auth id the projection ident identification so epsg and if i'm not mistaken okay it is three two six three two no three three That's UTM APSG code for UTM zone 33. And the last variable is the destination uh, projection. EPSG 4326. Like that. I still have a geometry point, but now it is in uh, unprojected system. And to compare it, I need the Y value of that. So... Let's get the y value of the geometry. 57. No, to compare it, I need the x value. Stupid. Okay, we have an x value, and that should be uh, bigger than the value for the UTM boundary, which I know is 12 degrees. So it should be bigger than 12. And that is a condition. So let's make a condition. If that is 12, uh, and we also need to, need to, uh, so if this condition is true, print the label. But we also need to print the labels on the vertical axis. So if, or, or if grid axis equals y, that's the vertical axis, then we should print our coordinates. So let's type in left, right, grid number grid number five two like that and if it doesn't uh, fit the criteria for the conditions we should do nothing hopefully this will work so again cross your fingers and it worked now we need to do the same, repeat everything for the right, uh, left side. So let's go back, add a new grid. Let's call it UTM32. Modify it. Select UTM32. Okay, it should be 1000. 1000. And as you see, it's correct on the left side, wrong on the right side. Uh, Let's change it to frame and annotations only. Draw coordinates. Uh, turn it off on the right side. Make it custom. Use the recently created one and modify it. So it says zone 32 right there and it should be less than 12 degrees and try it and there we go so now we only have one more problem do you see it there are some numbers running around the layout and that is when let's get some that is when a vertical line 
crosses the vertical axis or a horizontal line crosses the horizontal axis. Uh, so for this grid we need to change, uh, show all to show, let's say left, that's latitudes only. Uh, right is disabled, top show longitude only, bottom show longitude only. Now it will look as I expect it at least. And as you see it looks completely correct in the top, uh, top side, but we are missing some labels at the bottom. And that is due to this limitation that we can't differentiate between grid numbers on the top and grid numbers on the bottom. Yet, at least. So let's see what happens in the future. That was everything. Let me check my notes. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, as you may have guessed, uh, now the grids are not grids. They are uh, uh, lines. So they are geodata objects. So if I go back to my layout and add a... Uh, let's make it a point like that. Add some points. Dit, 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 dit. And add a label that says Label, make it big. Okay, and go back. As you see here, um, the labels, and that's not quite obvious. Let's add some halos or buffers, really big ones. As you see, the labels are in front because that's the ordinary behavior for um, for labels. They are supposed to be on top of all geometries. If you don't want that, there's a workaround. So you have decided that this is your map extent in QGIS. Uh, you need to add a theme that says grids. Okay. And close everything except the grids. I should have done that before. Replace the grids. Yes. Then you can turn that off, turn on the points, turn on your background, everything is fine. Here you go. You don't see the grids, but make a copy of the map frame. Control C, Control V. There we go. Put it exactly on top of the other and make this one follow the grids theme and the previous one. Let me just not draw those so we don't draw double uh, numbers. Okay and turn off background like that. Now, oops, the labels are below the grid, grid lines. And you can, with data defined properties, you can synchronize the extents of these two uh, maps with item variables. It's a bit complicated, so I, I will not go through it right now. But at least now you can work with your uh, normal map and then you can add a copy or, or a duplicate of that one uh, when you are done with the grid lines. Uh, and uh, that way you get no discernible difference from any other a map package when you create broken grids like this. With the exception that you are may be missing some coordinate numbers, but you can put those in manually if you will, if you really need them. Okay, that is all for this time. And it was a bit long, but uh, hopefully uh, 
you have learned some things. And if you are a developer for QGIS, you have also, I have also showed you one of the things that I would appreciate if we would see in uh, upcoming releases of QGIS. See you next time.